So I've got this lovely transformer again. This is a modified microwave oven transformer. The high voltage coil has been removed and replaced with this extremely thick wire, and it's only two turns of it. So it's got these input leads here, which are 120 volts to the primary coil, and then the secondary coil runs through these very thick cables, and if I turn it on, immediately you hear that 60 hertz hum. And you can see the result of shorting these output leads, those high current sparks. Very low voltage though. So we can measure the output voltage here. Open the circuit. We're getting about 2.7 volts. That's about what I would expect with the two coil ratios. And of course the input is just 120 volts. And I can measure what the output current is. Of course it'll be very high, so I'm not going to measure it with this meter because this meter can only go up to 10 amps because the current actually has to pass through the meter. So instead, I'll use this clamp meter. So I've got my clamp meter clamped around the main cable and I'm pressing max so it'll record and hold whatever the max current is. And I'll turn on the transformer and I'll just touch these two cables together and we'll see what the max reading is. So it's held the max reading of 1,278 amps short circuit. Of course, you don't want to maintain that for too long because even just doing that, these cables are pretty warm. However, it's okay to be short circuiting it for short amounts of time as long as we allow it to cool down in between. So I've got this set up fairly nicely with the leads parallel and my current meter. Uh, let me just position them. There we go, so you can see the display. First thing I want to try is this thin piece of steel wire and it's got a fairly high resistance. Remember, this is only 2.5 volts. So let's see what happens. So basically, it just heats red hot, and then from the springiness of it, it just bends in the middle. So I've got these cables much closer together now, and maybe we'll get this to melt. Oh, no problem. So with the smaller space in between, the resistance of the wire between the two leads is much less. Now I've got this aluminum plate that's from a Stark Model 710 power supply that I dismantled. I'm putting this underneath so that if anything hot falls down, it'll land on this instead of on the wood. Now I've got this nail, and it's pretty small, so I think it should be able to melt through pretty easily. No problems there. Cuts through like nothing. Not too surprisingly, these cables aren't very hot yet, because, as you probably saw, the current we're using isn't very high compared to what the maximum current was. Got a much larger nail this time. Well, a little bit longer. I think this is about an inch and a half. And as I expected, cuts that in half like it's nothing. Got a much heavier duty bolt this time. This is probably about five millimeters in diameter and three or four centimeters long. First, I'm just gonna place it on here and it'll be a lousy contact, but that'll create a lot of sparks, which I will film in slow motion. Well, that was certainly impressive, but I'd like to see if there's enough current available to cut this in half. So I've clamped it down for a better connection, and let's see what happens. Well, tomorrow's today, and now I've realized that that footage of melting the bolt probably looked terrible 
because the core of my transformer vibrates so much and my camera was on this work surface. Luckily, I have one more identical bolt and we'll get a better shot of it. So I've got it clamped on for a solid connection and I'll just get my clamp meter in here as well so we can get a current reading. Set it to hold the max. So once again it had no difficulty melting through that bolt after just a few seconds and the maximum current that we got was 1,121 amps. Of course that's only at like 2.5 volts but that's still a very impressive amount of current. And after that these cables are slightly warm but of course it wasn't running for very long so they're not too hot. Funny thing I realized is that after this breaks the cable drops down and creates a spark where the vice grip touches this aluminum plate because now it's shorting between. I'm gonna do one last test. I wanna see what the input current is. That's gonna be at 125 volts. So I'll position the meter so that it can be seen there. So again, I'm just gonna short the leads and we'll measure the input current. Just did a quick sample there and the maximum reading that it held was 28.8 amps input. So if we round that off to 30 amps input, that means the total wattage is 3,600 watts. And this came from a microwave that was rated for 1,500 watts. Obviously, this is being pushed way beyond its limits because these cables get so hot. However, the actual transformer core isn't too hot and the input leads aren't too hot either so with appropriate cooling time this can be used drawing extremely high current for fairly short amounts of time without causing any damage and after doing all that these output leads ow, aside from being still very hot these output leads have a lot of black residue on them and some of that white smoke that we saw when I melted the large bolt but the good thing is these leads are so long that I can just snip them off and strip off some insulation to expose some new copper, still with plenty of distance from the actual transformer. I find it really amusing that the same transformer used to melt bolts and nails in half is a perfectly suitable power supply for these low voltage devices. For example, these LEDs, obviously they're only taking half the wave. No reason for them to be warm or anything because they're just running the way they should on a low voltage power supply. These little incandescent Christmas lights also work perfectly fine. I just realized that even when there's no load on the output of this transformer, it's still drawing a whopping 14.6 amps just on standby. That is horrifically inefficient. So that 3600 watt figure that I said earlier for the apparent power, that may be true for the power being drawn, but our output power is going to be a lot less than that. Because whoever made this transformer must not have done a very good job because it's pretty darn inefficient. Oh wait, it was me. <laughs>